friends of mine said I should do house concerts. You know, you play in a band, you do all these rehearsals and everything, and you go, you play a venue, and and maybe it's thousands of dollars. You know, it's thousands and thousands of dollars, and it's split God knows how many ways. Um, tons of work. Uh, if you're traveling, and there is an element of danger and risk. Sure. Um, a, a lot of stuff can go wrong. Um, a lot of stuff can go right, of course, and that's why it's worthwhile to do. Um, so, I, so I knew that. But what I learned also is that when I, you play to, I saw this a lot in the Bears, I remember. Uh, you play to a thousand people screaming, singing along with the song, you know, or more, hundreds or thousands of people. And when it really gets, but, but your real interaction ends up being a few dozen people, maybe who get backstage or whatever. And some of those people are real pushy and you don't really want to talk to them. And there, it's a little scary and you got to be careful about it because you don't want to say the wrong thing. And, and, and that's cool. It's all right. Um, it's, it's fun. And here's our deli tray. Do you want some, you know, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it's fun. It's not a bad thing, but when I finally got over my fear of being solo and playing in a, in someone's living room, which generally will be somebody who's been a fan for 20 or 30 years, knows all your yeah. stuff. And they invite, to, they invite their closest friends over. And then I get to play. And when I do a house concert, I play a long time. I mean, it's like a three, it's, it's a Bruce Springsteen's concert. <laughs> and I, it's not just me and an acoustic guitar, I'm playing with tracks that I've mixed so it's kind of like I bring the studio into a house. Yeah. Okay. And I started doing this two years ago. So uh, I've gone into our albums and a lot of them I have digital, uh, um, like, I, like even some of the tape stuff has been digitized so I can bring it into my digital audio workstation, you know, which I know how to use and mix and record on. And I remix them. So. It's like Rob karaoke or the Bears karaoke or the Raisins or Psychodots. And I play along with it. And, and when I'm really close like that, the interaction, you know, I can see I'm this close. Well, I'm not this close, but, you know, I'm five feet away from a woman crying. Yeah. Because she's so, she's so moved by it. Um, and, and a lot of times a woman laughing her ass off at me too, you know, um, because I'm a, I'm a ham, you know, I'm a clown, I'm a tragic comic kind of person, you know, and, and that kind of thing was so fulfilling. And, and that's when I, you know, I, 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 I realized, oh, this small is the new big for me. This is the, the emotional connection, what's going on is so big. And I don't go running off into a dressing room after the show. I put my guitar down and sit down next to the woman that was crying and saying, you okay? Yeah. You know, anybody hurt? <laughs> um, and I get to sit down next to the guy who's like really watching where my fingers are yeah. and wants to know the pedals and stuff. And we just talk about it. Uh, it it was it was really uh, an enlightening experience for me to know I could bring a recording studio set up basically into a house. Yeah. So I did that in Florida. We did it in British Columbia. We've done it, uh, you know, on the East, uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Um, all points in between Chicago, you know, um, Minneapolis, uh, and we were getting ready this year to do it in California for the first time in Arizona, go west in Texas, you know, get some stuff and then get back up to the um, Pacific Northwest um, when it got all cut off. So I was, so that's what my live streams are about. I, I had that as a starting point and went back 
into the the mixes, mixed them a little bit better. And my son Noah uh, and another friend figured out the technology of getting it to sound good. Um, and, and it if you've sounds got amazing, I gotta say, yeah, it if you've got amazing. Good, you're you're hearing, you know, it's what I'm trying to do is bring the studio into a live stream. Now, uh, quality wise, I think the best I can get audio wise and visually is maybe a seven out of a 10. And I think, I think I mean, it was higher. I, I was so amazed by it. I think it was higher. You know, I, I gotta tell you, okay. my, my, I, I ended up listening to the, and watching the live stream by chance with headphones because I mean, normally I just Good. have my computer on and I just would be watching it. But my, my son was playing a video game in the room with his cousin and I didn't have the heart to send them, you know, packing away to go play somewhere else in the house. And so right, I let them do their thing. And I had headphones on, which I don't, I really don't. And I'm, I'm a music freak, you know, but I don't wear headphones a lot. And I, I need to more because I realized how many albums are mixed so well for the headphones. And your, your live stream sounded so good. And compliments to Noah too. I mean, because, you know, from a distance, mixing all that down and then you fine tuning everything that you're playing and, and, it was just really, it was an amazing experience to just listen to on the headphones. I loved it. And it's so clear, so crisp, amazing. Well, great, because I mean, that's, we've been really fighting there and there are like five or six, I mean, it could be, you could say more, but they're, they're the, the software talking to each other. There's software in the phone for the videos to, to link. And um, I'm going through some studio equipment. It's funny, I've got, you know, I've got like, really good microphones in the studio but it's funny how a hundred dollar sure sm58 the, the rock and roll standard is still the mic to use yeah it's after uh, all these years like, yeah. find everything and noah kept saying you know dad go back to try the 58 again and then i okay then i try something else dad the 58 um yeah noah i i'm here's a i am so lucky to have noah i don't have him we we've got each other right. but noah um, he has a really, uh, you know, s spongy mind. He's really into technology. He, um, I knew, I knew I had a hot one with him because when he was 15, he called me upstairs to listen to a CD he had of the first Led Zeppelin album. He had Led Zeppelin. He was 15. I was 15 when that record came right, out right. And, and he said, good, listen yeah. to this, you got to listen to this. So I said, I'm going to listen to it, to it with him. And, and he said, can you believe this? And I said, it's amazing, isn't it? And he said, nobody sings like that. <laughs> and I said, you're right. Nobody sings like Robert Plant, yeah. nobody. And, and just the production, I mean, Jimmy Page, <laughs> Uh, that that album is so good what a band what a, what a band and, and that and it was really cool because i realized whoa he's 15 and it's hitting him exactly the way it hit me and my friends when we first heard it right i mean the day the whenever anybody got that album we were just on the phone going <laughs> have you heard it yet and then and then can you believe it um so so he's really he's curious and um methodical and spirited and and the so he's totally the whole idea i guess what i'm getting at is uh the idea of doing a solo record there really is no such thing even even if you really do it in total isolation you're not doing it by yourself because somebody invented this <laughs> Right. Yeah. Unless you designed the software yourself, you know. Did you make that mic? Do you know how to skin a, a you know, a, a, a diaphragm on a on a large diaphragm condenser microphone? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't. <laughs> um, I know I know who to send it to. Right. Um, for that kind of thing. Um. So, yeah, that that kind of thing is a myth. I. You know. We, we might play all the instruments or whatever, and, and often I do, but even when I'm playing all the instruments, I'm like bass especially, who am I trying to sound like? I'm, I'm either trying to play like uh, Bob Nicewanger, you know, my favorite bass player, 
nothing against other great bass players, you know, yeah. Jeopardy, whoever, you know, Jocko, I know. But but, but <laughs> I grew up with Bob and, he, and he's played so well on so many records I've made. So if I can't get him, if he's not available, all I do is try to play it like Bob would generally. Occasionally, I want to go to James Jamerson land and that lasts for about 30 seconds when I realize I can't do that. <laughs> I can't get there. <laughs> So I know we touched on this a little bit earlier in our interview, but we talked about uh, your live stream. And I just want to go back to that uh, because I just think it's just really uh, such a high quality production uh, with so many people doing their own live streams and having to just put it together on short notice. We didn't know we were going to be in this situation. And so, so many artists may not have been prepared for that and had to put something, a home studio together that was a public home studio, not just, their equipment and you know they had to make a stage they had and i really feel as though your your live stream is top notch and one of the best ones out there so wow thanks <laughs> it's and it's so entertaining i so this is like your third season and a season maybe you can explain a season to people the season is a certain amount of episodes or approximate amount of episodes uh, well um uh, I, I think I can tell you the whole story. A, a couple of years ago, a, a couple of my um, friends were really hammering me on uh, the fact that uh, they thought I'd be really good at doing house concerts. Um, you know, small, independent, mobile trips around the country uh, when I could, when I got breaks uh, and, and do it. And uh, I, it seemed scary to do that on the other hand i've got tons of material and the thing that i didn't like about that idea was that does that mean i just play through a mic and maybe a small pa system or whatever in a living room or somebody's backyard and it's just acoustic rob and um while i like acoustic music a lot and that's generally how i'll write a song um i like electronic production and i'm an electric and i'm an electric guitar player so um, I had seen Todd Rundgren, I remembered from like the mid seventies, you know, when I was a kid, I saw him do a concert and the beginning of, uh, the concert, he, maybe the first 40 minutes of it, he just played to, to studio tapes, piano, sang his songs, a dream goes on forever, whatever. The tape broke during the show. Um, and he kept playing, you know, being the trooper he was. And it, for me, it was a really exciting thing. And I don't know if he said this, but what I felt like is he, he brought the studio into the concert hall, into Ford Auditorium in Detroit. And it just always stuck with me. And then when I saw other bands and, and performers, I, I realized a lot of people were lip syncing, things like that. You know, when I saw Todd, he was really playing, Yeah, you know probably flubbed a, a piano chord or two um but it just it i loved it i just loved it because i'm a i'm a studio cat i like i like recording studios uh, at that point in my life i already had a four track tiac you know so that kind of thing has always been like magic to me so um i realized i could probably do that i could probably go into my albums and band albums find material and just see what would work where I could, I could have drums, bass, keyboards, since other backing vocals and play my guitar and sing. So it'd be in a sense, kind of Rob karaoke in, in the, yeah. uh, the house concerts. And, you know, at first I had like 11 songs I did that way. And then, and then maybe half the night would just, would be just broken down acoustic um, performances. Cause sometimes, sometimes, Sometimes it's cool to do that. But I'm going to say this, and I know this is going to be on YouTube, but listening to Eric Clapton play Layla, acoustic, unplugged, I would rather have like forks stuck in my ears, you know, because just don't, I don't like it. I don't like unplugged all the time. I like it sometimes. Um, and I mean, I love Layla with Derek and the Dominos. I saw mm -hmm. Derek and the Dominos play Layla, you know? Awesome. So, uh, you know, I've, I've got something to compare to, you know, yeah. what's exciting, what's like, oh my God, you know, versus, ah, oh, 
you know, snooze fest. So um, I didn't want to be a, snoo- a, a, a snooze fest um, with my but, own stuff. You know, I mean, definitely, it's, it's, it's definitely not a snooze fest because uh, it's you, you, you keep it funny, you keep it light. Uh, and and you you have guest members here and there you know and 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 uh, it's just it's just really neat and uh, I mean you started back on March 27th I mean the things start kicking out of place on the 13th of March last year and you were like you were there and I know like you said the home the home show helped to get you ready for that you know to prepare that but you really did jump into action. Uh, you had to be one of the first ones to, to really say, I got to do something here. I, I have to, for my peace of mind, and also to just keep people and keep, keep yourself in front of people and to keep making the music. And, you know. Well, um, so, you know, so I did that a couple of years ago and I started with like 11 tracks and then I, I probably was up to maybe 22 by last March. Um, and then, I, and I was booking shows we were planning on going, we'd been to the Pacific Northwest and Florida and the East Coast, and we were, we were going to go to the Southwest, but everything got canceled. And uh, my son Noah is a, um, a drummer. He plays all over my new record, and uh, he also is a stage tech, and he lost all his work. So my uh, before it dawned, I, d- I did not know how long this pandemic would last. I Oh, we'll get through this thing. Um, I should have known better. I've I've read the, I've read about the Black Death and things like that. Um, but it, initially, it was just to give uh, Noah some work, you know, and because he said he thought we could do a live stream. Um, and then it really got involved. It, it, it was tricky. There's a lot of different software. A lot of it doesn't work well. It doesn't talk with each other. I didn't. I don't have a like a camera or a switching system or anything like that. But uh, he he guided guided me through it. And another tech uh, person I know, uh, Gordon Rankin, helped me. Um, so the technical aspects of it were way beyond me. But I had two helpers explaining, "Let's try this. Let's try that." So no one and I, for about ten days straight, uh, worked sixteen or eighteen hour days fighting software, just getting stuff working. And then by the skin of our teeth, we got the first show out. And I, and I thought maybe I'd do six of them. Um, and immediately it was just like, oh, I need more material, more material. So I was even getting like ADAT tapes of the bears out and transferring t- to my software and mixing, playing along with it, remixing sometimes 11 mixes before it started sounding right sometimes i got it right the first time um not often but uh we just did it and um i am a i'm a natural ham i mean i'm a performer obviously you know i did i I do that stuff and it it took me a while i was it was really uncomfortable to not have an audience um but then uh i realized oh well i'll just put I'll, I'll have some canned audience, you know, I, I could go to a garage band, you know, there's, I've got sheep, I've got big applause, I've got booze, I've got all this, you know, crappy production stuff. And, and I just kept doing it. And, and for the first season was just exhausting because I was, as soon as I was done, I was right, figuring out the set list for the following week. And it was and and I was never satisfied. I mean, I, just cringing. <laughs> and and the other thing that happens with me is I get really sick of myself. I, I like playing with other musicians. I like doing other other guys' songs or women's songs. You know, whoever persons. Um, but um, the more I dug in, the more I realized it was kind of like this just fountain of this endless fountain. And people started requesting the weirdest songs, stuff you know I hadn't played since. 1980 you know um can you do that one and it was like no i can't do it and then well maybe i could so i started uh getting help from um bob nicewanger who was in the raisins psychodots and bears he's got a home studio uh bam powell a drummer he's got a home studio so they helped me with this too um just kind of sent him assignments and the other thing that happened 
ask was um, I wanted the shows to be free because everybody I knew was out of work. Uh, but I also, there are pe people that are able to be patrons. So uh, we made it possible for them to, uh, you know, PayPal or Venmo me some product, some money. And it really has just been like a, a production fund. Um, so the, the shows have paid for themselves. I've been able to pay some bills and I, and actually sometimes there, there's uh, been more than enough money. So I've been able to send, um, um, I call them space jam dividend checks. I, if there's people that have played on the tracks I'm using, I'm sending them royalty checks, you know, <laughs> There's no contracts for this stuff or anything like that. I'm just doing it. And uh, cause I, I just, I felt during this pandemic, this is, I, this is not a time to exploit. Um, I, I, I just don't want to do that. I've been exploited so much. I, I just wanted, you know, if I, if I'm singing along with, with, you know, someone, a friend, they're part of the show, even though they're not here. Yeah. And I, I just, in this case, I should be paying them like it's a little gig. So, and I managed to do that only through, through the patronage, um, which is absolutely voluntary. And that's where, I mean, there's just, it's been pretty miraculous that that has worked out that way. So far, so far, so good. Any, anybody in this, uh, we're all freelancers. And um, that segment of the economy obviously just imploded yeah so i talked to so many artists that you know that they do work together with other people in their vicinity especially during this time where if you live in a in an area that uh, you know we're not traveling we're not really doing collaborations right now uh as much you know as we would like to i'm sure um and so people just all work together you see someone with 20 credits on an album and if they're an up-and-coming artist if there's someone that just is getting started which i talked to a lot of developing artists too you know and if they're just getting started and they have 20 people helping them they can't possibly pay all those people and they all i, I learned from them what i'm you know what you're talking about is they help each other you know they, they you know you play guitar in this yeah. album and i'll do this here i'll sing some backup vocals and they all just get together and it's about the music sure everyone's trying to make a living of course but they they can look past that during these times especially but even in the everyday times and say hey you know just, I want you to play this guitar lick. I'll sing some backup vocals. You trade services, and it's cool. Yeah, um, it's it, it's a. Uh, um, I mean, it, it it takes discernment. I mean, a lot of I, I do get a lot of requests to do um, stuff for practically free or free from people, and sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no, and and usually the determination is if. You know, if it's going to cost me money, if I'm going to turn be turning down work so I can do this for free, I don't do it. Of course, it's because I am supporting other people. I've got a family, and right. And but, you know, it's not like I, you know, I'm not a saint. I, 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 I I've generally discovered things go full circle. Right. Right. That. And you bring up your family. I mean, we take a moment. And you talked about Noah. I know Noah does the engineering. Your wife sometimes comes out and sings uh, a song with you. It's just so cool that the family's involved in a musical way in your show. Yeah, well, they're the only people around. If I could get my beagle to sing, I'd, I'd get Tilly to sing too. But yeah, <laughs> um, Swanee, my wife, is um, uh, she's a really good uh, key keyboardist, and and uh, she's from a very musical family, um, but has never sung professionally. She's sung little bits on it on my records. And I'll say, come in here and do this. <laughs> So she's really, I've, I've just pulled her into the, into the realm and, and I don't know how comfortable she with it, is with it. She looks like uh, she's having a lot of fun. Oh yeah, we have fun. I mean, yeah, we, we just have fun. And, and, you know, the other thing is it's not going to be perfect. If I get sound and performance to maybe a seven out of a 10, I just figure that's a win. If I want to get stuff perfect or, you know, perfectly imperfect, whatever, you do when you're recording that's I'll, I'll do it there but i know this isn't going to be i mean these are just not ideal circumstances so we're just we're doing the best we can with what we have where we are well again like i said before it's it's a very i think it's a very high quality uh home studio production home stage and it's it's just and you know so people should go and look for this and i mean 
on Saturday nights, typically when you do it, when you're in season, you know, and you might do eight or nine in a row, eight or nine weeks in a row, and they can go to YouTube and look this up. Rob Fetters is cheap. And, um, and they could look that up and see, uh, it's usually eight o'clock Eastern time, correct? Uh, no, it's nine o'clock Eastern time, uh, generally Saturday nights at nine. Oh, um, okay. So it's eight o'clock Central. I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry, you're right, eight Central. I'm, I'm stuck o'clock. in Chicago, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah. Three, nine, nine 3 p.m. I think it's the afternoon in Hawaii. I know our Hawaiian <laughs> viewers. And it's fun, you know, I, I, my, my, another one, one of my sons, you know, pointed out that I'm competing with, I don't know, Elton John and Lady Gaga and stuff like that, so. Bring it on, baby. <laughs> and, and you're keeping it real. You really are. You're keeping it real. It's, it's, it's just, you know, you have fun with it. Uh, and and it's, it's high quality sound. And just it's, it's a lot of fun. I really, truly enjoyed it. And it was fun to watch all the people in the chat room, the regulars and the new people each week that, you know, yeah. there's people that you see their names, they're, they're commenting and everything. And then you see it's a brand new, oh, I'm just calling it from here. This is really great. I never saw it before. So it's great to see that mix of people uh, in your audience, in your virtual audience. Yeah, I, I, I hope we can keep it up. I mean, it, 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 it's kind of, you know, goes up and down. Um, usually by after two weeks, though, you know, hundreds of people, if not over a thousand, have watched these things. So that's great. Really helping people. And the big thing, um, you know, I'll get like, you know, patrons will put some money in the coffers, but um, I get a lot of communications from people that, just uh, they are in, in in tough straits and they and they love the show and it means a lot to them um to because i mean i'm as depressed about the world as anybody else i just fake it i get but and once i get going i'm i'm better too so it's kind of, it's healing all around i think you know I, i've done something uh, i've i've done a trivia show online on monday that's music trivia if just because of the same reason. I mean, I, you know, I'm not at a place in my performing career where I could be doing a show. However, mm -hmm. I uh, do these music trivia nights for the same reason, just to keep people, you know, upbeat and it's always positive. It's not political. It's, it's always about music. I don't let people go in any political directions with their answers. It gets silly or anything. Yeah. Everything. And people have come out and sent people. I have connected with people that I haven't talked to for years that I used to work with in the music industry that I haven't seen there on the West coast, the East coast. And they're, typing in answers at 10 o'clock at night. It's, it's just been so fun um, to do. And we do it every Monday night. And like you said, at first it, it was, you know, I just was doing a daily, a daily question. I said, oh, between four and five, I'll do this. And it got to be hard to say every day for that, between that one hour, I'd have a question up there. Well, now I do Monday nights for a couple hours sometimes. And I'm doing prep work for a couple hours of questions, but the people are so happy and interactive. And it's just been fun. So I understand yeah. that you're, you're, we're doing a service and stuff, just keeping people, upbeat and happy and talking about the music or, or listening to it and it's keeping our chops up i mean i, I probably yeah, played great. guitar better played, yeah you know six yeah. months ago that's at great. least i'm more used to standing up and playing yeah that's great 